Hey everyone, it's JC. I am back. I actually disappeared for a while. I had laryngitis so bad. You guys, I haven't had it that bad in ever, probably ever. I could not even speak above a whisper for a whole week. And it was right during my family reunion. And it has been a couple of weeks, a challenging couple of weeks. And you can hear it a little bit, but I, it's funny on other platforms, you can jump on Instagram or Facebook and boo a little post and say, I've learned I just, I'm, but on YouTube, it's kind of weird. I'm like, what do I do? I just can't even talk to, to even make a video. So forgive me. I did disappear, but you know, I can talk again and I never have appreciated my voice more than I have right now. I want to share an idea with you today that I have actually been talking about several times in coaching. I say that a lot, don't I? I think maybe because when I'm coaching people and things come up, they start to stir in me and then I want to share them with you. But um, I'm going to share first a quote from Hannah Whittle Smith in her book, The Christian Secret of a Happy Life, because she makes a point in, in her beautiful 1800s language um, that I think very much applies to our asking the Lord to help us be healed from whatever it is, be it sugar addiction, emotional eating, any kind of disordered eating, out of control eating, whatever it is for you. If it's that thing that you've failed again and again and again, and I've had so many people like, I don't know what else I can do. This is one thing. This is one thing that, that really shifted it for me and has for many of the people I coach, I've been in coaching with as well. So she makes this point um, in her book that says, I verily believe a large part of the difficulty lies in the unscriptural and unnatural divorce that has been brought about between our so-called religious life and our so-called temporal life, as if our religion were something apart from, from ourselves. Excuse me, it's sort of outside garment that was to be put on and off according to our circumstances and purposes. For instance, she says, on Sundays and in church, our purpose is to seek God and worship and serve him. And therefore on Sundays, we bring out our religious life and we put it on in a suitably solemn manner and live it with strained gravity, she said, and decorum, which deprives it of half its power. Like it's like this religious um, fancy self. Oh, you're probably laughing. This, this is a section of the book that fell out. This is so funny. Sorry, I'm on a little tangent. I love this book so much that the back fell out. And I still, it's so marked up. And so, so I'm reading you from the torn out part. <laughs> she says, we, we do this with our religious life. We divorce it from our real life. And she says, so on Sunday or in our, I want to suggest in our scripture time, our quiet time with the Lord, we put on our reverent self. We put on our holy self. We kind of get ourselves cleaned up. We feel like more worthy to be in his presence somehow. The, it's just quiet and, and more, you know, holy or whatever. But she says, then we, we live it with a strained gravity and decorum, which deprives it of half its power word, because it's not our real self. It's not the real mess. It's not the real stuff that we're dealing with because that's over here in the temporal life. She says, but on Mondays, our purpose is to seek our own interests and serve them. And so we bring out the temporal life and put it on with a sense of relief as from an unnatural bondage and live it with ease and naturalness and consequently far more power. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. So this is, okay, let's now let's put this into the food frame of those of us dealing with fighting food issues. We, we very much may have poured out our soul in prayer in our quiet times and in church and in our, our religious times saying, you know, Lord, help me. I, I do not want to binge anymore. And I do not want to be addicted anymore. And I want to have the control that you have promised. And I want to experience this. But then we divorce those moments from the real messy, ugly moments of every day when we are most tempted to binge, right? I, I would suggest, my chair squeaking, can you hear that? I would suggest most of us are not tempted to binge during our scripture study. That is not the time. Generally, we're under control. We're filling, filled with the spirit and we're filling that calm and that peace and that closeness with him. We're probably not binging. We're probably not even tempted to. It's in the crazy, messy, hard, stressful times where we're losing it and we are in the kitchen like, give me all the food, I can't cope. But we divorce him somehow from those moments. And so, like she says, that unnatural divorce, the key for me 
came in bringing him right into the messy, right into the bingy moments, which we don't want to do because we don't feel holy enough. We don't feel worthy enough. We feel like a flipping hot mess. We're like, I, I can't, I'm not even, I'm supposed to pray. It's like, no, okay. I just need to deal with this binge. And then tomorrow I'll clean up my act. I'll go back to him in prayer in the morning and try to get my act together. It will never change unless we bring him right into the moments that are the messiest so that he can help us break it down and understand what's happening, why we're binging, how we can use his grace and his power to get through that moment, to shift in that moment. It's got to be as if he's standing right there with us in the kitchen or riding right there in the passenger seat of the car as we go through the driveway through to get our fix. He's got to be with us in it. We've got to quit this divorce thing. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. But I spent a lot of my life that way where I just felt like over here was my holy religious side. And, and I found great joy in that. But he didn't fit into the messy side because I just was embarrassed about it. I, I don't know. I had shame about it. Let me share a scripture. Let's go to, to Psalm 139 where we know this so well. This is David 139, 23 and 24 where David is saying, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me. Search me. Um, and so I went to many different translations. And and this is what we're asking for to help overcome this huge food battle in our life. Search me, oh God. Like, search me. Help me see what's driving this. Why am I sabotaging myself? What's going on? But we've got to have him right there in the messy moments so he can say, see, look what's happening in your head right now. Look at the message you're telling yourself right now. Look at, look at what's driving this. Unless we invite him into the mess, it's kind of gone by the next day when we're in our Bible and we're in our scriptures and we're in prayer. The moment is passed and the learning opportunity of being in that moment of temptation has passed. So we need to have him in that moment with us. Um, the NIV says, search me and, and know my anxious thoughts. Search my, show me my anxious thoughts or um, point out anything that offends you is another way of putting that scripture. The message translation, investigate my life, oh God. Find out everything about me. Cross-examine and test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. Again, can't do it unless we invite him into the most difficult, ugly, messy, bingy moments that we have. So he can help us look at the mess. He's not shaming us. We know there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Romans 8. We know that. So let's get over ourselves. Like, oh, but he'll be, he sees the, he sees it anyway. He sees the mess. You might as well bring him into it. Let him be right in that moment, in you, with you, however you look at that, to help you untangle the mess and reframe it with his help. The last um, translation, guys, it's a translation I'd never heard of. And I've been doing this for a long time. Um, have you ever heard of the easy to read version, the ERV? It was first published in 1987, so it's been around a while. But this version I loved. This version of Psalm 139, the easy to read version. God, examine me and know my mind. Test me and know all my worries. Make sure that I am not going the wrong way. Let's quit divorcing our so-called religious life from our so-called temporal life that is the part where we need him yes it's good to connect with him in our quiet moments but if we can't break down that wall and bring him right into all of the journey the battle when your kid is having a meltdown when your boss has just given you all this stress and you are freaking out and you are wanting food when you've just had a fight with a loved one and you are ready to eat when you're going through whatever it is that triggers you invite him in that moment. If you don't know what that looks like, I had someone say that to me this week. I was like, how do I bring it? Like she, she was in the middle of a busy, crazy social thing and food temptation. She always struggled with food temptation in that busy moment. And I'm like, she's like, but how can you be in that? I'm busy. I'm not quietly, you know, pondering in, in my scriptures. And, and so we talked about just asking him, show me how you show up when my kids are screaming, show me how you show up in the middle of the stress of the day. Show me where you are and how I can can see you in the 
in that, in the middle of the mess, when I may not even have time to get on my knees or say any type of formal prayer, but those are the moments we need his power the most. We need it the most. So I hope that's helpful this week. I am working on a new online course that is going to be out probably within the month. I shouldn't promise a timeline because I never know. We'll see if my voice gets better. <laughs> I'm working on it, a voice on, on, or a class, a course on whole food eating and how to how to do it your way in a way that works for you. But anyway, more on that soon. I'm glad I'm back. I've missed you all. I hope that's helpful. Have a great week.